Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience Methods 101. Today we're going to talk about time frequency analyses for EEG or MEG. When using EEG or MEG, we can pick up wavy signals from the scalp. These signals reflect rhythmic activity of neurons in the brain. Indeed, when neurons become active, they often do so in large groups, resulting in brain waves of different speeds. The speed of a brain oscillation is expressed in its frequency, meaning the number of cycles per second. From previous research, we know that waves at different frequencies have different functions at various locations in the brain. Brain waves are constantly ongoing, but in an experimental setup, we are often interested in how these brain oscillations look at a specific point in time. One of the most prominent ways to look at this is by doing a time frequency analysis, which allows for the investigation of brainwave activity at specific moments. One way to use time frequency analysis is after a specific occurrence, for example, the presentation of a visual stimulus or the presentation of a sound. The brain will react to this event. As such, we can analyze these so-called event-related oscillations, abbreviated as EROs. And this might sound familiar, because in a previous video we discussed event-related potentials, or ERPs. As a short summary, ERPs are the EEG or MEG signal in response to an event. Typically, this is done by repeating this event over many trials and then averaging the corresponding signal, let's say up to one second after the event. This will result in a particular pattern, where certain deflections in the signal have particular meaning and are related to different functions in the brain. So, basically, ERPs are just an averaged brain signal. Event-related oscillations are similar, but there is one additional step. First, we translate the brain signal to the so-called frequency domain. This means that we look at how fast the waves at a specific point in time are. Such a change from the so-called time domain to the frequency domain can be done by using a Fourier transform. Now in this video we won't discuss the mathematical details, but just know that the transition from the time to the frequency domain and back can be done quite easily. So ERPs and EROs happen after a certain event. Unsurprisingly, in some cases, event-related potentials and event-related oscillations are highly correlated. For example, when our brain reacts to a visual stimulus, we observe an N100 response as an ERP. At the same time, we also see an increase in the alpha activity in the event-related oscillations. Both responses reflect an activity in the early visual cortex. In this case, we talk about a so-called evoked response, which means that the visual stimulus resets the brain oscillations. So it doesn't really matter what happened before the stimulus, the ERPs and EROs will look similar in each trial, and both reflect the same process. However, in other cases, event-related oscillations contain information about brain processes that are not clearly observed in ERPs. For example, in a spatial attention task, where we have to focus on a specific stimulus, there is an increase in gamma activity when a stimulus is presented. This event-related gamma activity is not clearly seen in ERPs, but is obvious in a time frequency analysis. This is because the increase in gamma activity is what we call an induced response. This means that already ongoing gamma oscillations are amplified, so in contrast to evoked responses, there is no reset of the signal. Now when we look at the time domain, at the onset of the stimulus, the gamma could be at the peak or the trough or somewhere else in the oscillation. So by just averaging the time signals, we wouldn't get a clear deflection and no specific ERP components. But when using a time frequency analysis for each trial and then averaging that, we can see a clear event-related oscillation. Anyway, that's it. We hope you enjoyed the explanation about time frequency analyses. If you did, consider giving this video a like. And as always, we hope to see you the next time.